All right, folks. Okay, welcome to day 12. Um, so I'll, I'll let a little recap from yesterday's class and then we'll start looking into more of React in going forward from here, okay? So from yesterday, we discussed how we can able to create another component outside the React, I mean, outside your products component, and then use the same component inside your products component, right? And then we also talked about how we can pass the data from a parent to a child. And uh, Abdul, what do we call the data that is passed from a parent to a child? Oh, data which is passed from parent to a child. Yeah. I think the process is called props and uh, the data. The data uh, itself is called props. It's the process. It's not the process. The data itself is called props. Okay. Okay. The data. okay. At this point, at this point, guys, we are looking at two different categories of data, a state data and a prop data. Arjun, what is a state and what is a prop? Props will pass data from external component to the React component. Uh, to make it very clear, external component, sometimes it's a React component or sometimes it's an external library like Redux or Flux. But yeah. I mean, let's assume that the props are sent into the component into externally. The right okay and what is the state it will pass from within the component from uh, like some state yeah. internally within the component exactly state is internal to the component okay yeah. prop is sent into the component externally yeah. perfect now uh, a little recap on how we are doing trying to do a fetch we use a library called fetch we give out the url to that library it will get me the data now that data I get back from the API, it's an object which has all the other informations like the status code, did my, did my API go through? And if it didn't go through, what was the reason? We discussed about the different HTTP codes, 200, okay, 404, uh, the URL does not exist, 401 unauthorized, and there are few tens and twenties of other codes, depending on how you determine what happened on the other end. Okay, and then we dis going forward, we get the only JSON part from the stream object, and then we pass it to a next then, which is then setting the state of the component. In JavaScript, whenever you say this inside a function, so this is a function, whenever you say this inside the function, this always points to that function. But in this case, we need this that is pointing to the component. So what we do is we go right outside the function, right outside the function, we capture the this variable, which refers to the product component, we store that component reference in the component variable, and then use that component variable to set the state of our component. And do I do component dot set state, right folks? Now, remember in the uh, previous sessions, I talked about an ES5 versus ES6 syntax. If I go back, uh, a few, uh, you know, if I uh, if you try to recollect, I said something like, if you can do var react, var react is equal to require react. Now this is an ES5 syntax, guys. This is an ES5 syntax. If you remember, like few classes back, I'm no longer using an ES5 syntax. We'll be going forward using ES6 syntax, right? Now. Now, ES6 syntax have something called a narrow function, okay? An arrow function, a simple arrow function. An arrow function is something like this. It got a little weird syntax, uh, but you'll get used to it real quick. This is a function, and this is an arrow function. Anything after the arrow function would be returned. So if I simply say, if I have to write a generic function or an ES5 function, I would do something like this. Function, say hello, okay? And then I say console.log, hello, okay? But if I have to write the same function in ES6, I can do something like this. Now, you, uh, I told that creating a box in JavaScript you use a variable called var. Okay, folks, you use a variable, a keyword called var. 
Uh, let me see if the recording is on. Okay, we are on recording. We use a way, a, a keyword called where to create the boxes. Okay, so let's let's go, let's do a quick uh, JS bin here to understand the e declaring or creating the boxes using ES5 versus ES6, okay? So Abdul, you tell me, uh, let, help me to create a variable called uh, a name, Abdul, and then console log that same name variable. How do I do that? Uh, variable, variable is equal to? Where name is equal to? Where name is equal to? Some variable name, right? Yeah, any, any name. Okay. Yeah, and I console log the name, okay? And if I have to change the name, I can simply do something like this. And uh, now I should, what output should I get, Abdul? Should I get Karthik or Abdul? Uh, you should get Karthik. I should get Karthik because I'm changing the name, right? After the var. Yeah. Now, guys, this is ES5, ES5 way of declaring the variables. Okay, this is ES5. Now with ES6 syntax, there are two types of declarations you can do. One is a let, okay, a let. And you would still see the same thing. And the second, oh, sorry, I don't have to do this. Let name is equal to, okay. So let name, instead of var in here, I'm telling it let, L-E-T, let. It's the other way of creating a variable using ES6. Now there is a second way of creating the variable using ES6, which is constant, C-O-N-S-T, not A-N-T, complete word, it's just a constant. Now the difference between a let and a constant is, you see right now, I give it a run and you should see an error saying assignment to a constant variable. Okay, this is the main difference between the let and the constant. Let will allow you to change the variable value. Okay, it will allow you to change the value of a variable. A constant would not allow you to change the value of a variable. Okay, this is another interview question. What is the difference between let, uh, I'm sorry, what is the difference between a var, let, and a constant? Okay, the first difference is where you can go ahead and change the variable, which is same as let, but a constant, you create a variable, you assign a value, and you cannot no longer change the value of that variable. And this constant dot name uh, is valid only for primitive objects. Now, what I mean by that is constant person is equal to I'm creating a variable name and I say Abdul. Abdul, how do I constant, uh, how, how, how do I get the uh, name variable from person? Uh, I need to, con I, uh, on the U, uh, on the console, I need to print Abdul. How do I do that? It's an object and and the way you uh, access the properties of an object is using a dot notation. Person dot name, as simple as that. Okay, Abdul? Okay. I know you missed the previous classes, but yeah, this is how you wrote. Arjun and uh, uh, Vivek, you're good on this, right? Right, right. Okay, perfect. Now, <coughs> let you guys tell me what happens if I uh, change the name of the person. Will it still work or will it give out an error? I'm using a constant in here. Please note that I'm using a constant. Previously, I used a constant name is equal to some name and I changed it the name. JavaScript yelled at me saying, hey, listen, you're putting a constant there. A constant value cannot be rechanged. And I'm using the same constant on an object. Do you, do you think it would change or it will throw me an error? It will throw an error. It will throw an error as per my previous example, right? But this is interesting folks. If you are using an array or an object, constant does not care. 
you can still go. This is an interview question. Again, mm -hmm. if you use a constant on an object, can you change the name of the properties of that object? You can still change the name of the properties of that object. It will only work for string, boolean, number. Oh. That's all. Only primitive data types. It does not work for array and object. Okay, folks, this is this is ES6 let and constant. I'll share you a link to what are other changes of difference between let constant and var. Okay, and let's go back to our React world again. Now I can instead of using var in here uh, throughout my program, I'll go ahead and use a let function. Okay, so wherever I have a var. Now you guys are familiar with what uh, a var is, uh, or what a let is, right? Awesome. Okay, cool. Now guys, can I use a constant in here? I'm using an array, let product sections, and I'm pushing the items into an array. Can I use a constant here instead of let? Yes. I can still use it, right? Yes. But it's no longer a constant because you're changing the value, you're adding the values to it. Something which does not change is supposed to be a constant. Theoretically, you can still use a constant in here, but somebody who is reading through your code would understand, hey, he's using a let in here. So somewhere down the line, he's trying to manipulate this object. Okay, that's a thumb rule. Okay, guys. Now, I use a constant on something which is not gonna change across the application. Do you see something in here that does not change throughout the application going forward? Do you see anything in here? Like a string that does not change? Focus on component it mount and see if there is a string that does not change throughout my application. The URL, right? The URL does not change. So what I can try to do is, I create a constant in here, URL, and then take this URL from here, put it back in here, and try to use the URL back into the fetch. Now this gives me another benefit. We, we, were, we, we were talking about ES6 functions and then we've diverged into let and var, but again, guys, if tomorrow you're coming back to this product com products component, your backend guy have changed the URL. Okay, and he gave you a new URL. I'll give you two scenarios. Okay, the first scenario is your URL is directly put inside the fetch. Okay, and the second the second case is that your URL is the top of the file. If something changes on a URL, which is quicker, changing in here or going through your entire code trying to find the fetch and then change it here, or if you have multiple fetches you would still have to change on every single fetch, which is much easy, putting it in one single place and then going forward and using that variable or using the hard-coded string. You have to speak up because you know, right? Yeah, using one is easier. Using, using a URL as a variable is much easier. You know what is much more easier? You would go ahead and create another file called constants and you would put all your constants inside that file. We'll go ahead and do that down the line as our application grows, okay? Now we are talking about an ES6 syntax, right? ES6 arrow functions especially. No, if this, this is an ES5 syntax, okay? This is an ES5 syntax. Now I can write the same ES6 syntax of that function using something very similar. I would say, uh, say hello, okay? Is equal to a function okay and an arrow function and i would say same thing same thing using es5 or uh, es6 versus es6 okay and the main difference between es5 and es6 is that binding okay what oh, when I say binding, uh, I'll tell I'll tell you what exactly when I mean by a binding. Take a look in here, guys. Inside this function, when I say this inside this function, 
this always refers to that particular function i need to bind the func uh, this variable of this function pointing to the component right if i say console login here let's see what i what what would i get if in console login here if you remember from yesterday's class this is inside the function this okay and uh, let me see what what is inside the this variable here this is inside the function and you see this is undefined because inside the function this always refers to that function but i want to make it this refers to the parent or which is the component by itself so what i do is i can go by doing it in two different ways i can bind the function which is this so i take the function right after the function i can do dot bind this say hey function whenever throughout your life throughout your object whenever you say this always refers to this to the component do not do not mistake if you somebody says me okay i, I always point to myself okay in a group if i am a part of a group if i say me okay who's playing next Uh, another team is playing i when i say me i always point to my team okay i'm binding myself to the team the same way i'm trying to bind the function to the parent okay so i can do this now i give it a save and you should see something interesting happening previously this was undefined now this refers to the products okay now to make it much more cleaner you can avoid using the bind this and all that stuff yeah vivek bro i missed it can you repeat it one more time okay uh, let's let, let's let's take an example here let's take a real world example uh okay you are you are uh, you know you have a group of friends with me okay you have five friends within your group okay uh this this might sound stupid but okay so each of your friend ties a friendship band to the other friend and that is how your 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 five friends become friends this is how you uh, this is how uh you feel like you're all friends okay this is like a tradition think of this as a tradition you are five friends each of you tied friendship band to the other friend that is the only way you be, uh, when you say this is a you know we are friends each of you have a friendship band on you okay now if some if a fifth uh, if a sixth guy comes into your group okay when a sixth guy comes into your group if the if the that guy does not have a friendship band it's not part of the group and whenever that guy says we okay that whenever that guy says we you are not part of his team or uh, you know you are not you, when he when he says we you are not referred there he is referring to somebody else or he is referring to himself but if if you if you make that guy guy join into your group and he says we what does it mean we means all of six of you so you go you that guy you have to tie or bind that guy into your group does it make sense vivek yeah bro okay so think of this each guy is a function and whenever each guy says we we if you are not friends or if you are not friends we always refers to that particular person or people belonging to him but if you are all coming together tying friendship bands to each of you and then you become friends then whenever any of you says we we always points to all the group i mean the entire group the same way each guy this guy is a function and this guy says this now this guy when a function says this it always points to itself but i want to point i don't want to point him to himself i want to point him to the component 
or the product so what i say i bind i bind this guy to the product okay if this is esp of es5 way of doing it that, that's a very stupid example i I'll, I'll come up with a better example tomorrow but think of this that i can able to bind one function to another function okay i cannot i i can i can make sure that this inside the function the keyword this inside a function always refers to the products okay now what i do is instead of doing all the fancy bind this remove bind this and i i also wanted to avoid the function in here so i go ahead and use an arrow function so take this guy out this guy here and an arrow function that's all and give it a save and you should still able to see the products now this is always defined to the products this is little confusing with the the arrow functions they work different at different places mostly uh, i mean the most use case of an arrow function is always inside uh, when you are working with api calls and sometimes a lot of other use cases but most of the times it's always when you are inside a function you always want to declare define your function this refers to the component there are other places like event handlers on all that stuff we'll get into there but this is the major use case of uh, using an arrow function binding the function to its parent on which it's executing on okay i can do even though i'm not using this one here i can try to put three lines of code into one single line of code i'll keep this guy here and then just this comment it out this guy and what i do is i use an arrow function if i use an arrow function i can get rid of two keywords one is one is function one is the function by itself and the return keyword so instead i can do this one liner i got rid of the function i got rid of the function keyword i got rid of the return anything after the arrow function it automatically assumes that if it's on a same line it automatically assumes that it has to return okay so then my keyword data from api and then i'm instead of using the return in here i would just use my arrow function in here and that would return the data to the next line give it a save and it should work as expected any questions here okay and then we will move forward and then uh, we'll start creating another child component and start using the child component inside our parent component okay so i can go ahead and use a class uh, the name of the component is product because i'm already have products in here i want to make sure that products are pro each product is inside the products okay so class product extends react dot component okay and then i use a curly brace render curly brace uh, parentheses and just return just return what a div uh, which has which has a uh, properties like a price uh, name or i can do simply like this i can just copy this guy here with the h1 tag and the image tag and put it back in here okay but i'll just hard code the values for now price this is new and this is price and i'll i'll just remove the image for now and i can start using my my child component by using the just like the way i am using my uh, html tags i start using my child component so left angular brace name of the component and then i can close the brackets and i should able to see three things there the name and the price coming in from my child component okay 
Now guys, instead of rendering the function in here, getting the data, so there is a lot of things that are happening in here. One, it's getting the data, okay? And it's recreating uh, on the render function, it's generating a lot of views. And each view is a section, okay? So what I do is I take this section out and put that into a separate component and I pass the data into that component. So what I do is I remove this section in here, okay? Instead of pushing the section, I start pushing the, the product view, which is my product. Okay, so now I, I take this guy out and you should able to see my, my product card is rendering. If I go try to inspect this and go to the components and you should see under the products, how many number of products I have, those many number of products I'm generating. But that is something very interesting is that, is that every component has a name and price, name and price. I wanted them to be custom name and custom price and also the custom image. So how do I send the properties in, how do I send a different property inside? Arjun, do you remember how do I send a different property each time I'm rendering the product? This kind of, okay, other yeah, um, uh, film product space. Uh, product so we done. Yeah. I would say name At here. Name is equal to. Name is equal to. Um, iterating over the product. So each time I need a different product, right? And the China. Yep. So each time it's a different index in here. So it's the same thing. Products. The dot state of products. Mm -hmm and the index okay and the same thing i do with this send the product in here and i go back i should get the product in here how do i access the name of the product here uh vivek how do i access a property props dot uh, which props which component props? Product. Product. Okay, but if I have to reference the product, which is the keyword that I need to use? This dot. Yes, perfect. This dot props dot. And what is the what is the property name that I'm sending in? Name. Name. Right? So index dot name. Okay. And then I use the name property in here. I go back, I use the name property and give it a refresh every single time it should send me a different property in here what if i want to use a product what is the other thing i have in my product i go back check to see what what it is and looks like okay so what else what else i have in here category name id uh, and what else i have in here Oh, there's a price in here. So I would also send another property. So how do I send another property into that component? What would I say here? Price. Yeah, yeah price. Equal to. Price. And price is equal to same thing. I copy this guy, but only I need the price part of it. Okay, and then give it a refresh. How do I read the prop price in here? Same thing. This dot. Prop start. Is it name? Price. Price. Perfect. And same thing with the image. So I'll be real quick on that. So, image this dot state dot image and I would also need the category. I would also need the category. So category and I would also need the name uh, the image. And I go back and uh, do the same stuff in here. 
category you have image for twice i think sorry this one category oh image you have twice uh, image i have twice oh sorry get the guy out and then image i would use a force in here and the same thing this dot prop start image and see cool i'm getting back the same old thing but i'm reusing another component right inside the component there's a little trick in here if you're sending so let, let's see what is inside the each object right so let's see what is inside of each object you have category image name and then you would also have uh, price in here do you feel like should i send the whole product instead of sending individual properties in here because i'm trying to send the almost like 80% of the properties my properties are category id is in cart and the price the only thing i'm not sending right now i think it's only is in cart do you feel like instead of sending the whole thing in here can i not just say product details and send the whole object each object i mean like each object can i do that instead of i would say this dot state dot products and i can just send the whole object okay instead of sending the whole uh, okay let me put a console log and show you let me grab my chart here okay let's not i i really wanted you to look through what is happening in each object before i actually send it i'll throw in a debugger in here okay and give it an inspect and let's see what is inside each object i thrown in a debugger and let's see what is inside in each object of the arrays so this is my entire products list each each item in an array is an object which has all category id image uh, is in cart name and price so what i'm trying to do is i'm sending almost uh, name uh, the category i don't i i'm not sending the id i'm not sending the is in cart so i'm sending almost 80% of these properties would it be nice instead of sending sending the individual properties can i not send the whole object like in mean the whole object and then inside my component i only can take that particular object or particular property so what i do is instead of sending products uh instead of sending products dot zero at the array dot category zero at the array dot index zero at the array dot image i would do i would only send the the first zero at object completely or whichever object it is so instead of all these lines of code i would say product details the name of my properties and i send the whole object of each i mean i would send only the each object every single time i would send the entire entire object inside my array okay now you guys have to tell me how do i go here and what should i change in here in order to access that properties previously i was sending the name property only and then i directly access it this dot prop dot name now i am sending the whole okay let me throw in an inspector in uh, debugger in here and let's see what all i am getting inspect refresh and let's see what's on what i'm trying to get in here okay should i remove the debugger in here and then give it a refresh sometimes it's easier to open up a new console window and give it a refresh because it hardens up 
Okay, now I would inspect on this dot props and see what all I'm getting. This dot props dot whatever the property name I'm sending from the parent, you can see that right here. But instead of if is my this dot props dot name is still valid, Arjun? Yeah, sorry, I was talking on mute. Yeah, yeah. Is this is this dot props dot name is still valid? So it's undefined. It's undefined because I'm not sending the property. Top, yes. Yeah, I'm not but, sending the property anymore here. But what property correct. that I'm sending right now? Complete entire object. Huh? We are using whole object right on top. So yeah, the whole object. Individual. Uh, yeah, and what is the name of that object that I'm sending? What is the name of that property? Products. Product details, Arjun. Oh, product details, yes. Okay. I can't see the screen properly. Okay, yeah. this is the product details, the name of the property. So how do I access the name from the product details? Details dot name. Exactly. So this dot product details details dot name and same thing right. here okay and same thing here and throw get rid of the debugger and give it a refresh Just open up another tag Let's see what's going on in here. You know, read the property product details of undefined. Am I missing something in here? Product details. I'm using the same keyword, product details. Name, price, category, image, cannot read the property details. Let's see what's going on. Product details of undefined. I'll throw in a debugger in here and see what's going on. Debugger. And let's stop it in there. And I should say name, price, category, and image. Oh, oh, it looks like there is no image property. What I'm trying to send in here then. Okay, so let's go back and see. Does it say image or does it say anything else? It says image in here. Okay, so product this dot state dot index dot image. Uh oh. Props dot image. Can you guys help me? What's going on in here? It looks like I'm sending every property. Yeah, typo error. Yeah, do you see the typo here? I have to use the props. Now that should bring up my UI with the image. Cool. Any questions here? How do I get the data? How would I, how, instead of sending individual properties, how can I send the whole object and then listen to the object right inside my view? Any questions on this, guys? Can we move forward? Yeah, we can. Okay, cool. Now, uh, you if you remember, I said, hey, uh, the reason we brought up this product is because you found, hey, Vikram, you said like you, you're increasing the number of lines of code and you want to break down your number of lines of code and you started putting the component right inside the same file. Doesn't make any sense to me. Yes, it doesn't make even sense to me as well. We'll create another component, another file and move this component into that particular file. Okay, folks? So what I do is under the source, I go create a new file. I have to use it. Now, can I use a smaller case on the file name? Can I use a smaller case on the file name? Guys, what do you think? No, I guess that's what important. 
absolutely yes you you can use a smaller case on your file name it doesn't matter if it's a small case or a lower case your component should start with a capital case your file does not start with a capital case or a lower case but a good you know if you're trying to browse through your project okay if there are like hundreds and hundreds of components it's a good practice to start your file name with a capital case as well i'll tell you a reason this is this is because now i can browse through the files and even before i opening up a file i can really tell which is a react component which is just a javascript file now i can take a look at that index.js now this is not a react component how do i even tell that even before opening the file i look at this smaller case in here on the component file name and i immediately know that it's not a react component and anything that starts with a capital case on my file name i can you know reason uh, uh, i can able to tell it even before opening the file it's a react component and this is important as your code base grows it's really important to separate the files you know you should have a way you should make the code uh, you should able to read the code real quick you should able to get more details out of the code real quick and uh, the moment you start looking at the files you 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 immediately trigger okay no, no this doesn't look like a capital case this is not a react file this is a react file this is a capital case doesn't make sense so i created a product in here uh, i would try moving all the code that belongs to my product into this component so i cut this guy in here i create another component and i copy this in here but every javascript file have to know what does the react in here is so i would bring back my import react from react into this file okay now i created this file i removed this file now i give it a save okay and it should right away yell at me saying that hey you're trying to use a product and the product is not defined in the app.js because it's no longer on the same file so I have import to, the file as well exactly i have to import the file so i would say import product from and now this is where it gets really interesting i cannot simply say product because it will start looking into the node modules if i do not give anything uh, i'll tell you what anything is if i do not give anything to that file it start looking into the node modules i have to explicitly tell that my this is a product and you should not look into the node modules but you should look it somewhere else the somewhere else is the path of the file and i use dot backslash okay and the vs code would auto suggest you the file path i click go back and hit the product okay now this is this is where it gets really interesting if the file is on the same folder i should i should use a single dot but if the file is a folder which is which is one level up for example my entire fold my entire files are in source in here i would do something like this i would create a new folder okay and then i create a folder called common which is a common components i would i would use across and hit enter and i would move my products inside the common folder okay now inside my common folder now how do i reference a file path that is inside my common folder vs code would auto do that for you but just in case if it doesn't complete to do it dot backslash and it will list out all the files that are under the same folder i go to common and then give a backslash and then it will pop me up with all the available items inside the that folder so i hit enter and give it a save and give it a refresh on the ui and it says another thing attempt to attempted to import the product does not contain a default export guys if you are trying to import a file the file should export itself right if you are trying to import anything from the, any country outside your uh, into your country the other country should export it you cannot only import it uh, if you cannot import it until the other country export it the same way in javascript as well the other file have to export it if it does not export it you cannot import it now i go back to that product and i use 
export default and the product okay and now i should get my, my, my get back my products this is this looks good uh, i keep uh, I, I keep using default 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 now if i don't do this it's saying something interesting does not contain a default export now what i mean, what what do you mean by a default export now I take this example if if you're talking to someone uh, uh, and let's say you know if uh, uh, let uh, skip that example if india is exporting cotton from pakistan and india is also exporting other stuff from china okay now somebody who knows these imports and exports uh, if somebody comes to me and say hey did the import from pakistan come then that internally means is the cotton import from pakistan come because pakistan by default only exports cotton into india okay but if he, if the same guy asked me hey did the import from the china come then i would ask him what import which product which goods you are talking about right the same way javascript you can try to export multiple things and every file should have a default export okay you can export 10 different things for example i can do this export constant uh, url is equal to the url that i want to use in here okay now i'm a, uh, the same javascript file is exporting two things one is a default export another it without the export without a default in here i uh, to make it much cleaner i can do something like this constant url and export the url i have to do module dot exports url or a shorter liner i can simply do export right away on one liner module dot export would also do the same thing export will also do the same thing now what are the two things that i'm exporting from the product one i'm exporting the component the second i'm exporting a url but if you guys see how do i export the url into here the pro the component is the component is exporting two things the url and the comp uh, the product component but i'm only importing the product but how do i import the url can i do a comma here right that doesn't seems to work it's throwing me an error right away so what i do is any default export you can directly do like this but if you have more than one default you know you would only have one default export if you have other exports you do a comma and then a curly brace and then a url or whichever the export that is import exporting from the url and then give it a save and the url should be imported uh, let me throw a debugger in here and uh, you can able to see what i'm importing and you see i'm imp importing the url and the products okay two things this is the difference between a default export versus a named export a named export is this one a default export it a product okay but now what i do is i create another folder here called constants and create another file inside my constants and i would say api constants okay api.js and inside my api.js i go take this guy copy this and then inside my api i would have put this guy and i would say products url or get products api okay get products api and then give it a save and you guys help me how to import that url from the constants 
Arjun, can you help me how to import that URL from this guy, Constants API? Yes, yeah, I'm import. Import. URL. URL. From that uh, thing, for and copy that part. From dot backslash. Backslash. Constants backslash API. API. Right? Now this is giving me an error because I'm already importing the same thing and I'm again importing it. So I have to remove it, import it from here because I'm no longer importing it from the product. Now I give it a save and it should still give me an error saying that your we export to from the APIs. I'm sorry. Did we return export statement in that API? Talk? Yep, I did an export. But is it a default export or a regular export? It's a regular export. It's not, I'm not using a default keyword here. Mm. So if I'm not using a default keyword, then I have to use a curly brace. Because this is one product. This is one, uh, this is one import that I'm using. I can go use another import. I can go another import, another go on another mm. import. Okay, folks. Okay. And then give it a save and everything should be back to normal. Did I not uh, save it here? You change the name to URL to get product safety. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Really? Oh, yeah. Awesome. And then I use the products API and then I can able to rename that uh, file in the same line. I can say as URL. One line. I can say as URL. Get this guy and assign to this guy. Renaming the variable renaming the variable to make it much cleaner on my thing but i would still i it's a, always a good idea to use it like this and uh, i would i would replace this with get products api and it's a good idea guys to always have a capital case on your variables okay which are constants so i would say get products api okay and i copy this go back to product uh, app.js because Constants, you, the, the moment you look at a variable, you have to know this is something that's not going to change or it's going to change. Since I'm not using a constant or a let in here, I would not know that I'm going to change it or not. So I would use a, 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 a cap, all capital case with underscores to make sure that, uh, you know, so the moment I take a look, okay, this is a constant and this is under a constant file. Get products API, replace this guy here and cool. Sounds good. Now let, let's cover a one more simple topic and then we will move on to writing more of our react code now this is a little branch out from a regular react but i'll stop in here for a moment if you guys have okay now uh enough of react and let's jump on to a little doing a little css because it as a front-end developer it it looks me very odd to uh you know like bigger images bigger text i really want my ui to be little pretty and i really can do that with the help of css now now you can write css however way you want you can start writing the css in the inline style like i can do something like this style is equal to an inline object and remember in in react whatever you give to a uh uh, to HTML element, style needs to be an object. Like this is an attribute for the HTML element. But if you're using a conventional HTML, you don't need a curly brace. But if you are in the React world, you need a curly brace. But I'll tell you, I'll tell, uh, uh, the reason is that it assumes that it's a style object. Okay, so let, let's do this. I would say var, style object i mean i just change just telling it as an object is equal to a curly brace now this is all the css object okay so what i do is i wanted to do a, a different background color uh, i mean i need a background color for all of the, the all of the each of the product card okay so what i can do is if if you are familiar with css i can do something like this background hyphen color colon the background color is green but in react especially in react the style if you're trying to do an inline style for react components you cannot do hyphen okay look this is a thumb rule guys 
anything any component or a, uh, any the only difference between your regular html versus css is a camel case okay so i instead of doing a background hyphen color i have to do background c which is a camel case here okay. and this is valid for all the css properties not just one for example you are doing trying to do text align which is another css property you have to do text align a capital like a camel case okay and all the css properties you can put in here just remember that instead of using if the, if that property has two different words separated by an hyphen remove the hyphen and use a camel case in there so i'm using a green in here okay and i i i get this property and i pass that property into the style object okay and i should able to get my whole component background as a green in color now my image has a white background in here that is the reason the image does not does is not getting a background color but if i remove the image part you should able to see the bag the, uh, the green color behind the image now this is not a good way of styling an inline styling is a very bad way of doing a css style because remember you have to separate your view and your style if something you want to change something on the style part you should never go and check the component because your component can be used in multiple different places right and you're trying to do an inline style green in here and i do the i create another uh, component and i also have to change the green color across all the components so we, th that doesn't sound good to me i cannot able to maintain this code if something change that comes up uh, you know there is there is another high level management decisions i really don't want the green color for every component i need a blue color i should able to change one property and it should be re reflected across the all my application do you remember from the earlier classes where we did the class name so what i do is i add a class name in here okay i add, i add a class name in here now if if you are doing html guy folks you should see a class but in react class is already taken a class keyword is already taken for create, creating the component so you no longer can use a class you should use an explicit class name okay this is another interview question can you use a class attribute to style your objects on the heads uh, on the react components you cannot use a class even if you use your class the class uh, you uh, the, the browser would yell at you saying that the class you are trying to use uh, class on a react component which is not valid because class is already taken which is which does a different job so you have to use a class name is equal to and it's always a good idea to have the top level of your element matching your product uh, matching your uh, the component name so in this case i would go do uh, i don't want to do a capital case in here because this is a css right so this is not anything to do with react so i say product and then i also need a name on my h1 tag now you guys tell me what would be a valid name in here i want to you know make my h1 tag a little smaller so i'm i want to add a class name and then go add a style to make the class name shorter so what do you guys think would be a nice name in here product name the product name uh now in my case guys i have a product image in here but there are other screens where i also have to show the product name for example on the checkout window i have to show a product name on the h1 tag on the product card the size of the product name is different and on the other places the product name is different do you think there would be a conflict this this is a little conflict right because the product name is like a very generic term across the applications you would have the product name in multiple places i need to able to put a name in here that will explicitly tell me that this name belongs to this particular component called product and this is called a naming convention and people there are different naming conventions we will talk about one simple naming convention which is a very popular naming convention okay and this is called bem have you heard about this word called bem before uh, i don't have a 
participants. So you have to say yes or no. B E M. No. No. Okay. So uh, this is called a block element modifier. Okay. And let me uh, let let's go one uh, one uh, word at a time. A block. Now this is an entire block. Inside the block, you have elements. Okay, you have elements in here. Each of this is an element. Now div is also an element, but this is a block element. It's trying to hold the elements. It's trying to hold other elements. So this becomes a block. Now the way you give the naming convention is that you always name the block with with the straightforward name of the component. And guys, listen, the BEM styling, the BEM naming convention is not only confined to React. It's valid across all the frameworks. Wherever write your, your, you write your CSS, it's valid, okay? So take this. I have a block. Now this is the first element of the block. So how I go by doing is product, okay? I go product, but this is an element. It's no longer a block, right? And I use underscore underscore if it's a element and name. Okay. And how do I now remember whenever I say product underscore underscore name, I know that this is the product component. Okay. And inside the product component, I have a product underscore underscore name. So whenever I, I see underscore underscore name, the product component, so I'm giving a relationship between this element to the top element. And there is a relationship between this guy and, and the uh, React component. So there is a chain of hierarchy in here. Whenever, I, whenever I, I look at the product name, I see there is another class name called product, which is matching the product component. And this is inside a common folder. So it's no, it does not belong to a particular page or a, you know, you can use it across multiple pages. How, how do I go by doing the product, product price in the same scenario? I say product price underscore underscore product is the name of the element. Uh, product is the block is the name of the block and element. Make sense, folks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I would do the same thing. Product product. I would go here and use a product image we will skip the category in here because we would have a detailed page we'll create a detailed page where we would have category and we will add that category in the detail page so i'm removing that from here and you should able to see the product product image in here and it's showing me an error that's called image elements must have an alt property either with a meaningful text or an empty string for decorative images now this is image not... class name was still shown as price oh yeah thank you on that now uh, you see an error called image elements must have an alternate tag now people who cannot see the screen there are screen readers who read the text who read the you know uh, the screen reader will read the whole html whole the website to them they cannot read an image, right? They cannot tell what is an image, but I have to explicitly put another attribute. Okay, let's say alt is another attribute for people who cannot see the image and the screen data should read this image. So I say product image. Simple text, this is product image. So when the screen reader reads this uh, page for uh, people who cannot see it will read this text here instead of uh, you know it will skip uh, you know people uh, people have to perceive what is that image and you can go fancy and put what you can do a little description about uh, this is a tomato red in color and all that stuff we'll try to be very simple in here okay and give it a save Oh, you don't need to use an image tag in here. Okay, perfect. And give it a save. And then I go add a little styling in here. 
there is already an index.css file in here, which is a root file, but I really don't want to add styles into this index file. I want each component to have its independent style sheet. So I go create another folder called new folder called styles. And inside my styles folder, I create a, a, a new file which should match the property which should match the file name of that component which is products now in this case i'm using a lowercase because this is not a react component right folks this is not a react component and css cool and now i'll start adding my css styles in here so what is my first style that i need to add uh if i go put it in here the product back in here and I have a product class name. How do I access a, a, a Arjun? Do you remember how do I add a, a class name to a, how do I apply a style using a class name? Arjun? Yeah, sorry. You know how to add a style at how hmm. to apply a style using a class name dot product or product perfect and then what i do is i add a simple styles in there so i already have a couple of styles so i would go make it the width of the width of that uh, uh, this is all trial and error guys so i already have the styles up and running so i would just go ahead and add them but in a, uh, in a, if you're trying to build from the scratch you have to give it a trial and error whichever styles looks good to you okay and i'm trying to give a margin in here okay and all that stuff uh, i already have a couple of styles that i'm trying to uh, copy paste in here so you don't have to uh, you know we don't have to go over all that stuff again over and over and again okay but we're trying to do a product instead of product price And we miss to import that uh, product file. We miss to import the CSS that belongs to the product into the component in here. So simply import. Until you import a CSS file, it doesn't take effect, right? So Okay, can't resolve because I have to stop the server and start the server again. Because if the server, if you're creating a new file, sometimes the server does not pick up the, the new file change. Or I'm give, giving a wrong file path. So I go ahead and do a double dot. And there you go. So I applied a different uh, styles to my image uh image size becomes 200 okay and uh, then i have my products that are lined one next to each other and everything else looks good to me 